Uh, welcome to Community Financial Literacy's seventh annual celebration. Yay! Thank you. Thanks very much for joining us um, and supporting CFL's vital contribution to Maine's economy and workforce. My name is Mike Wood. I'm a uh, portfolio manager and vice president at RM Davis uh, here in Portland, and I'm also proud to serve as CFL's uh, chairman of the board. Uh, we know from our history lessons that America was founded by immigrants, many of whom risked all they had to pursue a better life, to enjoy freedom, or flee oppression. This continues today as new Mainers bring vitality and entrepreneurship to our economy. We are here tonight to celebrate and support CFL's mission of integrating new Mainers into our economy. Maine is, is aging rapidly, and we are the oldest state by average, average age in the country. We all know about the pending retirement of the baby boomers and the need to uh, replace our, and, and enhance our labor force. Uh, today's immigrants are eager to fill that void, uh, to work, to become self-sufficient, and compete in our vibrant economy. Uh, to succeed, these new workers just need a basic understanding of our financial legal and economic systems. Uh, my daughter and I met two gentlemen here from the Congo who've been here for two months and six months respectively, and they are uh, more entrepreneurial than uh, most, most people their age, and I find them to be very, very impressive. Um, really, this is where CFL is delivering, delivering a lot of value, getting folks integrated into our local economy and, and contributing to the workforce uh, with your support. So, as a quick overview, in 2015, we assisted almost 300 students from 21 different countries. Congo, <laughs> thank you. Um, Congo, Cuba, Burma, Iraq. Over this evening, you'll hear much more about these vital services um, that we're providing to the economy in the state. Uh, I'm going to now ask Adele Gattabriaziano, sorry Adele, to uh, explain the value she's received from some of our courses. Come on up, Adele. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Adele Gattabriaziano. Um, I'm 22 years old. I came into the U.S. in June 2014, and my home country is Congo. Um, and the the system, the education system in my home country is a Belgian system. So um, French is our official language. So when I came into the U.S., I didn't speak English, and that was two years ago. <laughs> um, after coming, I wanted to get educated for, to, in order to have a brighter future. I didn't want to stay home. I was 20 years old. I wanted to go to school as everyone uh, of my age. So after that, I went to Portland Adult Education. And after two semesters, they told me that I was ready for college. So um, learning was not a problem for me because I knew that I can learn fast. But I have one problem, and it was the major problem, was money to go to school. So um, after that, um, I was trying to find a way to go to school. And in October 2014, McDonald came to my church, the Bethel Christian Center, and offered to help people to get back to school, regardless your legal status in the US. Um, I asked 
uh, for his contact, and then we made appointment and discussed about the um, uh, about the options that were available to me. So I am an asylum seeker, and my case is still pending. So I'm not available for a FAFSA and all the financial aid and many of the scholarships. So um, I didn't give up. I wanted to find a way to go to school. So with that, we tried to find um, how uh, we could like find a way to go to school. So um, I heard about the Rockefeller Scholarship from adult from Portland Adult Education, and I talked about it to, um, I talked to McDonough about it, and then he helped me fill out the forms and it work over my um, personal statement because um, applying for scholarship was new to me because in my home country we don't have scholarships and other stuff. So after that, I got, in July 2015, I got the scholarship. I was granted um, the scholarship and received an amount of $3,000. In September 2015, I started at SMCC in a pre-engineering program. I still... <laughs> So I still needed about $1,000 to study uh, full-time as I wished. Uh, I applied at SMCC. Um, they have other small scholarships that I learned from my advisors, and I got another scholarship of $1,000. I've been attending SMCC for two semesters, and I'm doing great. Uh, <laughs> I've been taking five classes every semester, and I've been able to afford all the costs thanks to the scholarships that I got. Um, my GPA is 3.85. <laughs> And I'm expecting to graduate in fall 2017. I recently got an email from the Rockefeller Scholarship encouraging me to renew my application for next year, and I'm looking forward to do it. I want to encourage anyone who feels the importance of education to seek a way to never give up. I want to encourage also and to thank people who are willing to help immigrants to get educated. There are many asylum seekers like me who would love to go to college, but because they do not have access to scholarships, they cannot. I would advocate to many sponsors to support and uh, to support a scholarship found to give these asylum seekers an opportunity to assess higher education and realize the American dream. Thank you. Thanks, Adele. That's, that's tough to follow. Um, if we could just take a moment, if there are any other students, current or former in attendance, if you would take a moment and stand up, please. We'd like to recognize you. There's a, a few came all the way down from Lewiston. If you would, please. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Claude Raganji, our founder and executive director. In leading CFL, Claude has tirelessly advocated for the economic and education, ed economic education and integration of new Mainers. Uh, he's formed strong connections with political, educational, business, and community leaders throughout the state. 
He's probably the most connected man I know, and he's been here a lot less long than I have. So uh, we're really pleased and honored to have so many of you here tonight uh, in recognition and in tribute to uh, Claude and his vision for CFL. Uh, Claude is a graduate of USM and recently, relatively recently, received his MBA. Uh, among his other uh, public service activities, he's a member of the Portland Chamber Board of Directors, uh, the Financial Literacy Advocacy Council, uh, and a vested housing's home ownership advisory committee. Please join me in welcoming Claude, who has a few words to say to us all. I'm not sure about few words. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but thank you, Mike, for a wonderful uh, introduction. Let me say that I'm very pleased and honored to have all of you here tonight. It's a pleasure every year when I see so many faces coming to support our new manners and support spe specifically community financial literacy in this work. I also want to uh, thank those who are here for the first time. It's wonderful to have new people year after year. I'll tell you that this year it's a record. We're expecting 150 people, but we got more than 200 registered for this event tonight. I want to also acknowledge uh, my friend Cheryl from Vermont and her husband, uh, they are here, they came to be with us in this event. Thank you for coming. It's, it's very hard to do, uh, to be in my position as an executive director year after year to continue to raise money that we need for the program, but as well as to continue to provide the services that we do. However, it's wonderful to have all of you on our side. That's what, the only reason why we continue to be so successful. So I want to take a moment to acknowledge all our donors, our partners, and many volunteers who continue to work for this organization and support the organization. I will, I will ask you to pick up an annual report uh, to learn more, again, because they will try to cut my time, so I can't speak a lot about what we do in just a few minutes. But please feel free to get an annual report on your way so you can learn more about community financial literacy. I want to acknowledge uh, the, uh, the sponsor of this event. So please uh, let me ask my friend who's on uh, system here to project so that you see. Please hold your applause until all the names are being uh, uh, read so that we can acknowledge all the sponsors of this event tonight. We had uh, Men Credit Union League as one of the gold sponsor. We also have uh, the Sea Dogs. Can you believe that the Sea Dogs, a team, a sport team, just coming to support also the work of CFL? This is great. This is great. They're not moving. They're moving. They're not. I'm like the hockey team. They're staying here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have also our silver sponsors, the Bath Savings, Berry Dunn, Biddeford Savings, Casco Federal Credit Union, Seaport Credit Union, Clark Insurance, L.L. Bean, Memek, uh, R.M. Davis, System Engineering, UBS, Family Wealth Management Partner, UNAM, Vigilant Capital Management, LLC. Uh, yes, those were the, uh, the silver sponsor. Now we're going to go to the bronze sponsors, Oro Europe, Avesta Housing, Cartridge World, CEI, Coast, uh, Coastline Credit Union, Coffee by Design, East Brown, East Brown, and IDEX. And finally, we have uh, the Poland Financial Group, Pretty Flattery, Town and Federal Credit Union, Tree Corp Federal Credit Union. Please 
join me to thank all these sponsors. And then also, um, we had Norway Savings and also Cabot also who helped with this event. Thank you very much, all of you, for your support. Again. I also want to recognize my staff. We have a very small group, but one thing that we have in common that I like about them, they're so passionate. They love this work, and they feel committed to continue to saving their fellow immigrants. And those Americans also on our staff, Every time when immigrants come, they smile to them, they feel so good. I'm not sure if you have any visit CFL, just try to come to our office. By the time you open the door, you see Mara, she'll be smiling for you. <laughs> and we have also uh, uh, a wonderful board, which does a wonderful job. I cannot tell you that, Many organizations are jealous because of my wonderful board. <laughs> it's so talented, skilled, and I cannot tell you. But please, let us ask them to wave your hand, the board and the staff, where they are, so then you can know them, they will recognize them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank specifically Hada, who made this event special. She worked so hard so that we can have a wonderful event. Despite all her full-time full job doing her grant writing and, and among many other things, but she was able to pull this piece together with Mara. Again, please, if you can give them applause. Thank you so much. Finally, I want to thank my own family. I work sometimes 60 hours, but they still support me anyway. <laughs> One thing that I always ask myself, every time when I go home at 5.30, my kids always ask me, Daddy, what happened today? And I'm so guilty to see that I can work always late. But thank you, my wife Esperance, and the boys and the daughters, and my mom was here, my brothers, for your support as always. Thank you so much. For those who are new to community financial literacy, CFL provides financial education, financial coaching, financial counseling, and higher education. It's something different from where we come from. And that's why we are unique at community financial literacy, because immigrants serving other immigrants. When they come to us, we give them the best based on our own experience based on the things that we have gone through. And that's why we see so many people coming back and say we need more education from you guys. As you heard Michael talking about, last year we provided services to almost 400 individuals and family members coming to us for coaching, counseling, and also higher education. And I cannot do this myself or my staff without all your support. We thank you. I can say that in the last seven years, we have served more than 2,000 individuals in our services. In 2015, it was not different 
as you hear me speak a year after year, that we're going to continue to expand our services. I'm pleased to say that we entered into a collaboration with the Corporation for Enterprise Development, known as CFED, from Washington, D.C., a national, a national nonprofit based in D.C. dedicated to expanding economic opportunity for low-income families and the communities in the United States. And this is a milestone for us. We're no longer a local nonprofit. We want always, my dream is always to expand. And we want to continue to do so. And I tell you my secret, the secret that I have used, but don't tell anybody, it's just special because you are here. <laughs> CFL has found the only way of success is through partnerships. And that's how we have been doing it. That's why we are so grateful to have so many, not only partners, sponsors, but people who are willing to support this organization and support the new men as into, uh, who have chosen men as the second home country. So we want to continue to expand our mission beyond just what we've been doing. Last year, do, we did a survey and a focus group to, and we came, we, are, we realized that there are many new manners who are underbanked, but also unbanked. So CFL, with many other partners, are working to see how we can help people. And the best way to solve that issue is through partnership between a financial capability organization and the financial institutions. So we'll be working to look into that. With that, let me introduce our speaker today. L last year, I went to Augusta and I met the Attorney General. A person who was very dedicated to the financial literacy, financial services to many manners, including our new manners. So I spoke to her, I called her and said, would you like to come and speak for us about the topics of financial literacy and the role that the immigrants can do in Maine? She said, I'll be happy to. So please, I don't want to put how, something in her, uh, her word. I want to introduce the Attorney General, Jenna Mills, to come on the stage and to give us a presentation. And thank you. Thank you very much, and Claude, thank you for all you do. I'm so impressed. More than 2,000 individuals served and trained and to become a full uh, partner in the main economy. Uh, I can't be happier to hear that kind of news. Now, you may wonder, why is the Attorney General here? I mean, I go out and we're prosecuting murder cases. We're <clears throat> trying to advise the governor and keep him out of court, things of that sort. <clears throat> this is sort of a reprieve for me, I guess, in a way. But, uh, you know, I'm so, so um, enthusiastic about this program. Uh, and we uh, have a very vibrant Consumer Protection Bureau where we try to participate in financial literacy programs. Uh, and I am pleased to say that with Senator Justin Alphon's help, we, we just two weeks ago dedicated, uh, allocated one and a half million dollars out of the Standard & Poor's uh, settlement from a year ago to the Jobs for Maine's Graduates Program. <clears throat> we, are, we are fully convinced that consumer literacy and financial literacy is the way to go that every person graduating from high school should know how to not only fix a toilet and fix a flat tire but balance a checkbook and use the computer and know how to look at debt reasonably and in, in, in an educated and well-informed fashion uh, and uh, continue their education without going into extraordinary debt. So <clears throat> I was uh, interested in learning about the organization. Also, you know, we are very concerned. The average American credit card debt is about $15,600. That's the average credit card debt. In Maine, it's about $5,000. That's still high considering the cost of living in Maine. The United States consumer debt in January of last year was 
3.328 trillion, three something trillion dollars consumer debt. Two and a half trillion was non-revolving debt, non-credit card, and 80, 887 billion dollars was credit card debt. Uh, so we're not necessarily getting the word out there in terms of financial literacy. About 13% of Americans do not have health insurance, and that creates a great deal of debt. And one of, as you know, one of the biggest reasons for uh, debt is medical expenses that cause half of all bankruptcies in the United States. And foreclosure filings. Our office was part of the litigation that resulted in the massive national mortgage settlement uh, four years ago. And we were pleased to be the, one of the primary plaintiffs in that case uh, some years before when I was Attorney General before. And uh, that resulted in money coming into the state of Maine to help with foreclosure relief. Oh, there I am looking at myself. Yo, who's that on my shoulder? <clears throat> but we are concerned that 68% of Maine college grads come out of college with significant college debt. And that the average student loan debt uh, that they come out with is over $30,000. Uh, and so that causes me to be very concerned about financial literacy and to be, want to be a more of a partner in these, pro these kinds of programs. Um, <clears throat> the, um, in, in addition to the JMG program that we have supported with the legislature's help, we're also partnering with something called EverFi which will be available to all the high schools in the state of Maine to promote financial literacy, teach kids how to do basic banking, teach them how to plan for college with, in a financially responsible way, teach them about credit card debt and about budgeting, basic budgeting. So we're using our settlement monies for those kinds of programs uh, and hoping to make Mainers, all Mainers, new and old, uh, literate and educated uh, and responsible citizens. You know, Claude wanted me to talk about New Mainers in particular, and I, I read uh, Charlie Colgan's information that he presented a couple years ago uh, to this same group or similar group, and it was very informative. And uh, he pointed out that um, half of the New Mainers coming here have bachelor's degrees or graduate degrees, an invaluable resource. And more than half are young, I mean, between the ages of 18 and 44. Then I reread Jim Tierney, former Attorney General Jim Tierney's remarks about New Mainers and the need for diversity in Maine's population and in our workforce. Uh, and we all know that Maine is an aging state, it's the grayest state in the country. We need New Mainers. We need to diversify our population in our workforce, and we welcome you. And <laughs> and I am so delighted that a program such as this is helping inform and elevate and educate new Mainers in Portland and Lewis and Auburn to be the kinds of citizens that you know you can be and we want you to be because we need you. Now I thought I'd, I'd uh, sidetrack a little bit and talk about the Consumer Protection Division of the Maine Attorney General's Office because we do a lot of information gathering. It seems to me part of being a financially responsible citizen, part of financial uh, literacy, also means becoming a smart consumer. So I want to do a short PowerPoint about consumer, what I talk about a lot because I don't think you can talk about it enough. And that is preventing scams, financial scams, uh, and in involving yourself in being a, con a smart consumer. Maybe this can become part of Claude's program, educating new Mainers, because I give it quite a bit. And if I knew how to work the clicker, I'd give it now. Like, to, like the arrow right? Cool. Smarter than I thought. <clears throat> Oof. So the Attorney General's Criminal Division, uh, excuse me, Consumer Protection Division, um, receives me, receive consumer complaints of a financial sort and of a <clears throat> business sort every day. We receive uh, actually hundreds of consumer reports and complaints. And we maintain a database to see what's going on in the state of Maine, what's happening to consumers, how are we losing money, uh, and how can we better protect consumers. And we make referrals to civil or criminal enforcement agencies whenever appropriate. You remember there was a car dealer in Bangor a year and a half ago, we went after, we brought a class action lawsuit, 
and uh, put them out of business, and we've got re restitution to thousands of Mainers who bought used cars from that individual. That's the kind of lawsuit we get involved in. Somebody's been to Bangor and bought a car there, huh? We get, we, so we keep a database and we share that with the FTC, the feds. And this is the kind of scams, that we're, the kind of complaints we've gotten last year. Last year we got 12,885 complaints. Just, and most of these phones are, uh, are operated by volunteers, consumer mediators and volunteers who answer the phone. So 12,885 contacts, emails and telephone. Over a thousand cases were open for mediation. We do consumer to business mediation and we get a great deal of satisfaction for the consumer and for us. We closed 730 mediated cases last year and returned $576,000 to Maine consumers through this consumer mediation program. And I'm not going to go into detail about these kinds of complaints, but these are the categories we see. Um, the lottery scam, right now the IRS scam, it's everywhere. I'm getting called allegedly by the IRS. You know, Seriously, in my office? I don't think so. People call and there's a very aggressive scam and I want every one of you to be aware of this and don't let anybody you know answer the phone if somebody on the other line says it's the IRS or it shows that it's, it's pretends to be the IRS on caller ID because they manipulate caller ID routinely. The IRS will not call you. They're not going to call you. And if you pick up their phone, you engage those people even for 10 seconds, they will call back and call back and call back. They're merciless. Don't answer those calls. I had one person come up to me and say, Janet, I got a call from the IRS. And I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. I know it's not from the IRS. I guarantee it's not from the IRS. Oh, okay, you sure? I said, I'm positive. He said, Okay, because, you know, I did do a little under-the-table work last summer. I might owe the money. <laughs> That's between you and the federal government, I, you know. But they're not going to call you on that. they got better things to do. Frauds and scams are everywhere. Um, be suspicious. Be cautious. Um, use caller ID when you have a landline and, or cell phone, either one. And sometimes people call you pretending to be somebody else that's kind of routine and if you answer the phone and you, you think it's a scammer um, don't don't engage them if they know they've got a live person they'll be relentless and calling you back calling you back they may not even come out and ask you for money they'll come out they'll say we are just calling to confirm a few details about you and they're going to try and get information from you and steal your identity and steal your the money out of your wallet um, no bank, no doctor, no police department, no insurance company is going to call you and ask you for personal financial information. They're not gonna, they already have it. They don't need to call you and get it from you. And if somebody calls and says you owe them money, say, well, send me a bill. Do not wire money to anyone you're not familiar with. And sometimes people call you and pretend to be a relative maybe in a foreign country. And this has happened to some very well-educated people. People I know got scammed by phony calls and emails saying, well, I've been robbed, I'm in Portugal, and I need $1,000 to get home. Those are common, common scams. And then they'll say, don't tell anybody else because I don't want anybody else to know. It's a very common scam, and I'm trying to get the word out for people not to get taken, because once the money goes out the door, it is gone for good. So if somebody you're not familiar with asks you to wire money, that's a big, big red flag. Oops, and that's who you can report it to. Don't respond to messages that ask for your personal or financial information. Something called phishing is when uh, they send pop-up messages to you or uh, phone calls. They claim to be from a business like TD Bank. They claim to be the police department. They claim to be the courthouse. I've got a phony Janet Mills Facebook. There's a fake Janet Mills who has a Facebook page who's soliciting people to, get <laughs> for, to give them money, to give her it money to get federal grants. I mean, they're unscrupulous. Me? Come on. Um, <laughs> 
So when you get a message, a pop-up message that pretends to be a business that you're familiar with, don't click on the link and don't reply. Delete, delete, delete. Use antivirus spyware stuff, antivirus software in a firewall and update that regularly. All right. Don't respond to messages that ask for your personal financial information. Robocalls, we all get them. Guess what? They're illegal. There's not much you can do about it. We report them to the FTC. Um, Rachel at Card Services, anybody get those calls? Yeah. Uh, or the fake auto, auto, auto warranty call. The warranty in your car is almost out. What if I don't even have a car? They don't know. They, don't, they make it up. They just make any excuse to call you and get you on the line. Hang up. Do not press one. Do not press any number because they will, they will come back and come back and come back. Report the call to do not call registry. Don't agree to, oh, this is, a, this is an interesting and common scam. Like you're on, it's on Craigslist or something and uh, you think you've sold something that you've been advertising for sale and you get a check that's more than the amount you were trying to sell it for. And then the person, the, the alleged buyer will say, um, just wire the balance to a third party and that's for shipping. And they've given you this bigger check and you put it in the bank. Guess what? It takes more than two hours to clear that check. And you've wired your money out and that check is no good. It's a very common scam I want everybody to be aware of. Don't do it. Just don't wire money unless you really, really know somebody that needs it. So, finally, the Financial Protection uh, Bureau, CFPB in Washington, is a great resource for financial literacy and consumer protection, consumer finance. Um, as you all know, or you should know, federal law, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act makes it illegal for a creditor to, to discriminate in any aspect of credit transactions based on certain characteristics, including race or color, religion or national origin, and many other things. So if you feel you've been discriminated against on, a, on in extension of credit or banking, there are remedies for that. Let's see. Yes, home finance too, yes, all right. Check your credit report. You don't have to pay to, to get your credit report. This is a common misunderstanding. There are people advertising on TV saying, get your credit report through us, just send us a check, you know? No, don't do that. This is the annualcreditreport.com is where you get your free credit report. Uh, and if there's an error, then you report it to consumerfinance.gov or the main Bureau of Consumer Credit Protection. So that's, uh, and then identity theft finally, um, not uncommon for somebody to steal your identity. It has happened to me. I've had credit cards stolen and uh, the credit card companies are now being very astute in letting you know that there's been some transaction in a state where they didn't think you were present. Uh, and you can report this as indicated. FTC or us, uh, and if you want any help with a consumer issue or if you have financial issues, questions that we can help you with, this is our number, 1-800-436-2131, the Maine Attorney General's Office, we're here to serve, the Maine Consumer Protection Division of the AG's Office. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about the immigrant population, there's a lot of bad feeling on some, some people's parts. I don't share that bad feeling, and most of Mainers do not. Most of us are happy to have you here. We want you here, and we want you to stay. <laughs> Fifty years ago, Senator Ed Muskie gave a speech, and he ended it by saying, the road to eventual, eventual world peace does not lie in a treaty between governments. Treaties don't remove the inherent distrust of each other that exists between nations. If we're to treat our fellow man with kindness and respect, recognize the rights of our neighbors in short supply, apply, in short, apply the golden rule, do unto others, we will be on the road to world peace. That's what the message I'm here to bring that we wish you to become a full partner in, with us and a full part of our economy and our social structure. You are the hope and the heart of our future. 
You are new Mainers. You are true Mainers. Thank you. Welcome to Mainers. Thank you so much, Jenna Mills, and uh, we are so happy again to have you. And we take your warm welcome with our all gratitude. Or oh, I'm sure that all new men as here are very happy to hear that message. Thanks a lot. And I guess she landed me some of uh, her time so I can take more time. So, as we are getting toward the end of our service tonight, we want to actually recognize some of the organization individuals who have been so helpful to uh, our organization, to the population, to the community that we serve as well. CFL has always, at the annual celebration, provides three different awards. We have a Volunteer of the Year Award, a Commitment to Service Award, and Outstanding Community Partner Award. This year, our Volunteer of the Year Award goes to Melissa Nangere. Uh, Melissa, This is one of the, the surprise award we always give each year because we do not want to tell them how powerful and helpful they are in helping the organization. Melissa joined our organization about last year and she did uh, as an, uh, she was covering the office, but she went beyond just her assignment to even become an interpreter for her peer student in a classroom. So again, thank you very much, Melissa. We're so happy that you were able to do this. You want to say something? <laughs> thank you. Just to say thank you for CFL to give me that opportunity to help them and help myself get some experience. Thank you. Thank you. For those who work with the nonprofit, you know that you cannot succeed without volunteers. And I know I was fighting with the Paul and Dali Education that I stole Melissa from them. And I said, no, I just lent her to myself so I can give it back when she's ready. The second award, which is a commitment to service award. I'm very emotional to say this. You heard what um, Adele said today. When she came two years ago, she could not speak English. But she had one place to go. It happened to me in 1996 when I came here. I couldn't speak a word in English, to be honest with you. <laughs> but again, I had one place to go. When I started CFL, the first person who took me and say, I'm willing to work with you and partner with you were the same organization, was Paul and Adal Education. I remember back at Douglas Street, we in a meeting. I was holding a pamphlet, which I called a brochure. And I told Rob Wood that this is an organization I'm going to start. From nowhere, 
without any additional marketing. He said, I'm going to work with you. And I'm going to support you. The first organization not only that gave me life and the place to start was PAE. And today, they still doing hope. They still giving hope to many nomenas. You cannot imagine when you go to a foreign country, when you can't speak a language, how hard that can be. When Rob Wood retired, I said maybe this partnership was going to go away. But the Rob Wood's legacy was left at PAE. When Beth Campbell took over, she said uh, with open arm that we'll continue to work with CFL and the new manners. Thank you, Campbell. Let me ask Campbell to come and with her team to receive this award with a big applause, please, for this organization. It's with great pleasure and humility that I accept this on behalf of Portland and Delta. Ed. As you can tell, this partnership started long before I arrived, and Clement and Claude are part of our team, and we're happy to provide this service. It's embedded in our programming, and it will continue. Claude and I work together all the time. We're thought partners, and we're very happy to partner. Each of us gets something out of it. Each of our organizations gets something out of the partnership, and that's really the true spirit of partnership. The staff from Adult Ed is in the audience tonight, and Rob Wood is here. And I have to say that when I took over from Rob Wood, and then Claude took a bit of a hiatus, Kevin and I had to figure out what was happening. But we figured it out, and Claude came back and gave us some guidance, and Rob gave me some guidance, and I'm just thrilled that this partnership continues, and thank you. Thank you. You can see that we are building a movement of partners and that's how, you remember the secret, that's where we have taken our success. Finally, the Outstanding Community Partner Award. I would love to call Senator Justin Alphonse to come forward so that we can give this award together. Two years ago, we were struggling at CFL to figure out how to continue to work and serve the new manners, not only with the financial literacy, but also with higher education, and to help people like Adele to give them an opportunity for higher education. I didn't know where to go, but I found a man who could guide me and show me the place. Justin, not only that he's a good friend of mine, he's opened his house for my family and I to go and have good time with them because he believed that the new men that we are really can make a huge difference in his home state. He took me and said, we need to go and find a place where we can find a true partnership. And it didn't take long was started as a conversation between the two of us, and of course the board and the, the task force, and I'm sure Greg can remember, the task force that we put together to look for additional funding, which you, uh, Justin Alphonse was part of, came together 
and that was the, the beginning of our relationship with the Financial Authority of Maine. Today, I'm pleased to see that our relationship and partnership is stronger than just a word. So the Outstanding Community Partner Award goes to Financial Authority of Maine. What started as a conversation became a real, and together, community financial literacy and the Financial Authority of Maine are pleased to work together to make a difference in a new man's lives. And a few months ago, I met with Bruce Wagner, the CEO, who was very humble to come to my little office just to share about this partnership. Again, please let us welcome Bruce to come and receive this award. And then you're going to say yes. So, so at Fame, we thought it was our secret to success to have great partners. <laughs> Somehow the secret got out, but we've got a big job ahead in this state, uh, and we think about Fame's reason to exist. Our vision is to create great paying jobs for the citizens of Maine, and our particular way to do that is we have a push-pull strategy. We want to uh, promote education so that Mainers have the skills to take on and fill the requirements of our economy in the future. And we want to make sure good jobs are there and we have a great economic development program that supports that. If I look at what's happening right now, in the last three years, we've actually lost about 25,000 people from our workforce. Uh, but to meet the economic requirements of our future, we need about 60,000 more people uh, by the year 2020. So I don't see any better way that, to do this than through the types of things that uh, we're doing right now through the community's uh, financial uh, system and uh, the excitement that we have in trying to help new Mainers uh, come in and join the Maine workforce. You really echo the Attorney General's comments. You're, you're all more than welcome and anything we can do to help is coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I can hand back the microphone to Mike. So probably the best words of any presentation are in conclusion. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. For those of you who've supported CFL generously, volunteers, donors, sponsors. Uh, if you'd like to become a donor, please see our website, cflme.org. Uh, just briefly, I would like to again thank Attorney General Janet Mills, Senator Justin Alfond, uh, Portland Police Chief uh, Michael Saschuk, City Councilors uh, John Hink and David Brennan, uh, Carol Pavlock from uh, Senator King's office, and again, all of our sponsors from this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, there is uh, a, a, a wonderful buffet dinner. Uh, there's plenty of drink. Please mingle. Please enjoy the evening. Uh, and Clement, you have one last announcement to make. Thank you. Thank you all again for your support. We are concluding our meeting uh, for tonight, but I have a uh, few announcements to make. Sea Dog, the Sea Dog, in partnership with. Uh, Hello, food is not ready yet. <laughs> All right, we have a few announcements. The Sea Dogs, in partnership with uh, CFL, invites all the new manners to the second new manner event at the Sea Dog game on May 15th at 1 p.m. And Sea Dogs has given us 250 tickets to give to people. Uh, during, during the game, we will have free food and volunteers from Sea Dogs 
who will be there to explain to new manners the rules of baseball. I remember years ago I went to a Atlanta Braves game. I spent four hours, I didn't understand anything <laughs> except how to order beer and a hot dog. <laughs> so if you come on the 15th, on the 15th, uh, people will be there to explain to us how the game of baseball is played. And the last uh, announcement is on June the 4th, it's a World Refugee Day. It will go from 2 to 7 p.m. at King Middle School on Deering Avenue. June 4th, we have a World Refugee Day. Everybody is invited. I want to take this moment to thank CTN, Community Television Network, who are here today to cover this event. And I want also to thank especially my students who came all the way from Lewiston to come and participate into this uh, event. Thank you. <laughs> Last but least, we want to thank the ladies who cook. Uh, there will be a tasteful food tonight. And uh, give them a round of applause. Thank you, uh, enjoy the food. Please network with people who are here and uh, thank you for coming.